Hey everybody, so um, Sion here is going to tell us more about what Corkbot's all about and what the team here in Tulsa has been doing, so take it away. Thanks, Carlos. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am Sion. Um, I'm here from Tulsa, graduated from University of Tulsa, working here in Tulsa. Um, I'll be presenting Corkbot on behalf of Code for America, Code for Muskogee, and Code for Tulsa. Um, so let's talk about why Corpod. Like, why is it important? Why is everyone so hyped up about it? Um, from the statistics and study from Tulsa, 63% of those who received a text message reminder paid all of their outstanding fines compared to only 48% of residents, uh, which means there were 15% of increase. And that means a lot. Um, another study in New York City said message cut failure to appear rates by 26%. Those are very big, significant numbers. So what we're doing with Corpot is we're creating a reminder system via text messaging, uh, text messaging app so that people who have court dates coming up get reminders about it about a day or a week before. Um, and it all started from Code for America, and then Code for Atlanta took it and then really ran with it. They made, it, made up a system that allows reminders and um, information about how to pay fines if possible. Code for Anchorage also took it and then also did the same thing. And then us here at Tulsa and Muskogee took it and created a texting app out of it as well. Um, to talk about a uh, little bit of the technology that gets involved with it, we started off with Philip starting uh, using JavaScript to create the app. And then look over there, went ahead and wrote that back again in Python. Um, Max did an amazing job with some CSS and HTML to make it look better and pretty. And then I added some functionalities using Lex and Lambda to scale it to the entire state instead of just Tulsa. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, thank you guys. So uh, let's talk about what Lex and Lambda is. Uh, it sounds like nothing to you, but it actually is a big uh, component of what the court bot does. Um, Lex and Lambda pretty much allows you, as just a normal human being, to say what you want, and in the computer end, they try to understand what you're trying to get out from us, the court bot. So they have what they call intents, and the intent of a court bot user is generally to get court dates and also reminders for those court dates. Um, to deliver those intents, you have what we call an utterance. So you say, well, when is my court date? You know, when should I get reminded or give me more court information, right? And then what Lex and Lambda does is it puts those utterances into a slot and gets the responses that you send into a value that the Lex and Lambda can use to then make computation out of. Um, and then finally, there's a fulfillment version which allows the Lambda and Lex to do what you are wanting to complete, which is set up a reminder for your court date. And then it, we go ahead and um, compute that all on the Corpot Python backend. Um, so what does that mean as you for the user? Um, it is currently available on Facebook. We just created a Facebook chat app. Thank you, Luke. Um, so if you would like, go to Facebook, type Corpot, um, and then you'll be prompted to go through these series of conversations going back and forth. Um, it is also an, uh, available on Slack as an app. Um, it goes through the same process uh, so that the user, even if they don't have the information ahead of time, can be uh, walked through or talked through or messaged through the system so that you can get a reminder set up. Um, so I'm going to show you some cool websites. So this was the old Oklahoma courtbot.com. As you can see, it had Muskogee County number, the Rogers County number, and the Tulsa County number. This was important because the Oklahoma as a state has this really cool system called OSCN that compiles all the court cases into a single location. However, each county is actually reuse their uh, case number which means if you are from Tulsa looking for a specific case, you may get a same case number coming out from Muskogee or Rogers, which was the reason why we initially had these three numbers. And then we realized, well, why should we have all these different numbers? It doesn't really make sense if you can really just have one number and some a little bit more programming to go ahead and scale it to the entire state. And that's what we did with Corpod Python. Um, 
So now we have a single 844 number uh, that you can text right now and you will be stepped through the entire process of figuring out which county your court case is from and then what year it was from and then finally your court case number and then it tells you that you'll be given a reminder from a day and a week before those dates the, the, the court case is coming out. And as we were talking about before, it is available also through Facebook Messenger and also through Slack. So I just want to say like this has been an amazing experience um, and a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to scaling it up. Um, and I learned a lot through learning how messaging works and how those um, interactions work and I'd be really happy to talk about it more for um, Clear My Records as well. But thank you Luke, thank you Max, thank you Diana, thank you Carlos for bringing me onto this project. I would not realize how much this meant until you guys all told me like this is amazing and it means so much for these people so that's it Thank you. Um, some of the works that we're doing especially diana is trying to front is having it scaled up and rolled out to any other counties cities and states in u.s so what i what um, luke and i have focused on a lot is allowing our system to have other states or cities or counties give them, give us your information and we'll have all the computation done for getting the responses from the users and then returning the correct dates and then setting up the reminders properly. Um, there are some other feature increases that we can do, which is including like providing information about if there's any outstanding fines. Um, Atlanta did those things where like if there's any fines that you have to pay, then they also provide the information about where you need to go to pay those fines. Um, some additional like functionalities are um, I think I've been told, I don't know where from, but if, you're, if people who care about you also get reminders about those court dates, you're also more likely to go to court. Um, and also oftentimes these are the people who will try to support you to go to court and provide rights or arrange like childcare supports or anything like that. So um, we're trying to add in functionalities to also have multiple phone numbers so that the people who you care and they care about you can be reminded that you also have to go to court and get things done. Okay, so whenever you say utterances like get case information, ooh, get case information, um, tell me what my dates are for court or something like that, um, the first thing it does is it hits Twilio, which is a text messaging app. And then Twilio sends a request to Lex and Lambda, which is Amazon program. And then they start saying, okay, it seems like you want case information. So what county is a court case from? So to answer your question, Hashim, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You are, thank you. Thank you. Um, so to answer your question, the first thing to scale it to the other counties and other states is instead of that, say, what state are you from? And if I do that, and like Oklahoma is listed under the list of states that can go ahead and go through this process, then it can continue through the steps. Meanwhile, if we can't go ahead and offer services to California or whatever, um, then we can redirect them to maybe some more additional resources they can help. Or even send them to California's America, Code for America Brigade. That way they can go ahead and adopt this program as well. So does that answer your question about like how will it handle? Currently, it does not, but it's really simple as adding in additional prompt for a state or a zip code or whatever, so that I can go ahead and filter for those available locations. Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone else? If people don't know their case number or their court number, like, how do, you, how do they even, because for me, that's like the barrier to actually use this. Are you addressing that? Is there any information like, I don't know my case number, go find it? So um, right now in our chat app, it does not address that. And I, that's one of the features that we have been talking about, but it takes a lot more work because there's a lot of different conversations that need to happen for us to get there. Um, if you look at the OSCN website, do I have it pulled up? I'll drive if you want to. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you look at the OSCN website, it has a case search on the right. Uh, if, if you, yeah. So if you look at this, it has a bunch of parameters. And a normal person like who don't know when and where and what their case number, this, this is just overloading you with information. 
So ideally what we could do is we can search by your name. That's one of the options they have over here. Um, another thing they can do is they can search by the county or the county in which the ticket or the court case is from. Um, so there's various different ways you can handle that. It's just right now we don't have that ability. If you were just saying like, here, this is a cool way for you to get reminders for a case coming up, but they have no idea how to get the case number, then I would direct the user to the OSCN website and try whatever information they can put in to get that information. You're currently actively directing people that way? Yes. Yes, in two ways. Um, the final message of whenever you're done talking to the bot is here, go to here for any questions. And those questions I'm hoping have the right links to send you there. But what would be better as an experience for a user is, okay, it seems like we can't find your court information. And as a matter of fact, some of the things I do, like um, the third check over there, which is a case ID, it checks um, the package for a valid case ID. And it checks that twice. So what I really should do is I should say, okay, the third time they check, don't give them an error message, but instead direct them to OSCN to find the case information and then try the system again. So that's where the Lexa Lambda is really cool because you would, even though you're not an actual person texting behind, the experience that they get is very personal and hopefully through that process they're um, educated in regards to how they can go about getting this done. Does that answer? I tried the, the texting, and it was uh, for a case that had, someone um, had a preliminary hearing set, and it just said um, they can't find an arraignment thing. Does it only work for arraignments, or does it pull court dates for other things? I'm so glad you brought that up. We, we, uh, we, uh, it only works for arraignment dates right now, okay. and if there is other court dates that are, list, that are things that are not arraignments, uh, we don't know about them. <laughs> so we know the Lex and the Python stuff. Um, and so the first ones that we were always shown were always like, there's an arraignment date. But if there's other records that, this, that we can look for in OSCN to say, oh, this is the court date, then we need to know that. Um, okay. So let's chat afterwards yeah, and you yeah, tell yeah. us. Because we're not the, like, we always need the domain experts. And this is why what I totally encourage is for like, like I said, we put this thing together, we throw it up there, and we let people who actually know what the heck is going on play with it, right? And then they can give us like the, oh, here's what you really need to put into it. And we're like, yes, thank you. Like, this is what exactly what we needed is this kind of like, people won't know their case numbers, or you know, it's not always an arraignment date, or we need to know like these things are the next steps for us to build. Because otherwise, we're just building whatever we think of, and that, that doesn't work. Yeah. So do you want to show it up? So uh, the, look, the texting the whichever. We can do the texting, which is yeah. over here, or we can do the court bot messaging. So. Look over here needs some information about a case coming up. And disclaimer, it's in the past. <laughs> um, what county are you from? Or what county is the court case from, Luke? OK, Tulsa, cool. Um, and then it asks you what year it is. Can we go ahead and do one like, can you do like 1994? So some of the things I've added in to help better guide the user, I've added in like, um, ways to gracefully fail is what we call in um, software engineering. It's basically directing the user, not you know, slapping their face for being incorrect, but instead saying that, hey, like, we are actually only accepting these kind of values. So like, that's where the Lex and Lambda can do a lot of really cool stuff in. Okay, so 2014. You have a court date coming up. <laughs> you have to f uh, do the full, okay, go for it. <laughs> So then it tries to look up I don't know case number, which <laughs> you can do it. Error messages. <laughs> are there error messages yet? There are error messages. It <laughs> returns back saying we couldn't find that case number. But can you do a different one and try like CF and then do some blahs? Oh, you're going to do the correct one. You may have to actually reset. Oh. Yay, we found the case. Um, and you have a date coming up in October 28th and 28, 2014. Another thing I need to fix is we need to capture for cases. Um, and then it says, hey, do you want a reminder one week and one day before that? And do we have your permission to do that? Cool. So now um, 
core pod at this point. So Lex and Linda will be pinging the core pod system that we created and we'll set up a reminder to be created. And then we give you a fulfillment message according to Lex and Linda's rule that says, hey, we did what you asked for and this is what you should expect going forward. Um, and that's it. Uh, I was gonna say, oh yeah, the Will asked about the different types of things. So domain, inf domain knowledge is really important. I forgot to mention John. Do you remember his last name? I forgot. Dungan. John Dungan. Um, he was the one who actually created what we call a scraper to create a package for OSCN. So I can't just, like as a computer, the computer can't click and type OSCN and then go and fill out all this case information. Um, there needs to be something else that computes and gets all that information in a way that computer can read and write to it. Um, what he has set up for OSCN, which is amazing, only covers, unfortunately, for CF and CM, which is yeah. felony charges and misdemeanor charges. So if you had some other dates coming up, like, I don't know, a divorce date, I'm sorry, Dave, if you have to go. <laughs> Um, but like things like that, it's not covered. So those are other things that we want to kind of scale towards. But for, for the problem to be more approachable, we went ahead and just focused on the criminal and the misdemeanor charges only. Um, and if any of the, if any, uh, one is in the crowd that has used OSCN and especially used it with Python, this is what John Duncan created. You can actually just pip install OSCN now and then you can start making queries and it will do all of that behind the scenes stuff of basically sending the queries to OSCN and then scraping the results out and creating like the case that you can then use in Python code. So this is the thing that we use. Yeah. It's John Duncan's library. And ideally this is what the other counties or like ideally the state or whatever court system there is already has an endpoint that we can just go ahead and make a request to. And they'll tell us, hey, you need this URL and then these parameters, and then we'll return you these values. And we can actually show them the CorePod Python uh, API, right? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and quick note, I think it's the West Virginia has the exact same. Yeah, Virginia has uh, a statewide system as well. And so Virginia, if you're listening, you should join us to conquer the world and <laughs> set reminders for everyone what court case is coming up. Yes, Virginia. So yeah, so in this case, um, what we have for other brigades is if they can stand up their own API endpoint that looks like this and then returns this, we can add them to core bot. So they need, we have a very like explicit thing, hey, if you're somewhere and you know how to scrape your own areas, regions, jurisdictions, court system, if you stand up a URL, that looks kind of like this, or if we need to change the params a little bit, we can do that. If you can stand that up, and then you respond back to us with the date time, we do the rest. So we do the Lex, we do the chatbot interfaces, we set up the reminders, we send the reminders. The only thing you as another brigade have to do in order to work with us and get onto CourtBot is you stand up basically your own court system web scraper, and then tell us where we can hit it. And then once we do that, you're now on CorePod. And so this is the last part of the scaling thing. We can scale to where anywhere in the country where a brigade can stand up something like that, they can now have CorePod. So this is the design for scaling beyond Oklahoma, scaling to the rest of the brigades that might want to stand up something like this. 